Hello. Welcome to the official Hacks podcast from HBO Max and Pineapple Street Studios. I'm Wanda Sykes. And today I'm here to chat about the brilliant show Hacks with the people who created it, Jen Statsky, Paul W. Downs, and Lucia and Yellow. The seventh episode of season two, and it's called On the Market, and it was written by Samantha Riley and directed by Lucia. Whoa. Whose house is this? Mine, unfortunately. Do you own a side mansion? I guess I'll stop beating myself up for owning so many tote bags. I'd love to sell. It's been on the market for over a decade, but my asshole neighbors have tanked my property value. Built a goddamn treehouse to block the gorgeous view, which was the whole appeal. Isn't the appeal that it's the castle from Beauty and the Beast? Mm. Anyway, I ask them every year, and they won't budge. I mean, their kids are in their 20s now. Grow up. Mm. Are they white-collar criminals or celebrities? Or worse, hippies with inherited wealth. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello, Hi, hello. Wanda Sykes. How are you? <laughs> Doing great. <laughs> Happy to be uh, here and chatting with you all, wonderful people, talented, funny people. Created a, an amazing show that I uh, I love. It's the one show that my wife and I watch together. Well, that and uh, Call My Agent. We watch oh, that. Oh, yeah. Another oh, great show. Oh, we I love, love we're show. big yeah, fans of that good. show. We love that show. Um, I have, I've said this to you, and I say it literally to press all the time, but, you know, you are... You are my favorite stand-up. I say it all the time. And Aww. I have been just such a, um, like, serious. Like, I remember when I was, like, you know, doing comedy in New York and reading Yeah, I Said It on the subway and screaming with laughter. And I was I'm there. Just I'm like, a witness. I saw it. It's true. <laughs> I'm just, I, I I have to say that, like, you know, having you on the podcast and knowing that you you like the show, is it's really meant a lot to me. I, I really, I just need to say it. I love the show. I don't like the show. I love the show. <laughs> it's so good. Well, thanks. Yeah. I mean, and you know, the season is them on the road, and mm -hmm. I know you've been on the road a lot in your career. So do you feel like that the only way to hone an hour or to get it going, you like you have you you must feel that way too. It's like you just gotta get on the road. Absolutely. You have to take it on the road. Um, that's the only way that that I can work, you know, as, as far as like, um, putting together an hour, mm -hmm. um, cause it's, it, it constantly changes, you know, and, and really, cause it starts out really fat. And then mm. when you're working it on, on the road, it's, uh, just trying to, you know, get it tight where yeah. you're getting rid of ex you know, excess words that you don't need. It's like, oh, my God, how long is it taking me to get to this <laughs> punchline? Jeez, mm. you know, uh, by the time I get to the punchline, they're going to forget about what, what the joke was even about, you know? <laughs> right, right. You know, Skittles isn't going to be funny by the time I get there, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you like being on the road? Like, is that a thing you've enjoyed in your career? I love doing the shows, mm. you know? Getting there, the, the travel is still... Um, annoying, mm -hmm. you know, right. but yeah. it's, you know, we just, you have to do it. You know, we, um, that's how you get to the gigs, you know, yeah, but, yeah. and it's always, it's those few minutes before you walk out on stage, you know, you're back there and you, you I still get the butterflies. I still mm. get a little nervous and it's not until you get that first big laugh where you go, okay, this is cool. Now I'm going to have yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. And then like some nights, you know, I, I, I have to change up the act because, uh, you know, sometimes you're on stage and you're just like sick of hearing your own, your own voice, you know, mm -hmm. where you're like, will you shut the fuck up? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Ha, ha, ha. I'm funny. <laughs> shut up. You know. <laughs> Do you, find, do you find, cause uh, you mentioned like getting butterflies still, did, have you found that that's happens the same? Is it less or is it even more? Because, you know, as you've become more and more well-known, I wonder what it's like to workshop material when people come and they're like, oh, we know Wanda Sykes kills, you know, to, to be starting mm -hmm. with a new hour or a new batch of material. Is that even more intimidating for you now? Or are you like, no, they'll, they, they trust it'll get there. I, th I think it's, it's, it's more intimidating, you know, because mm -hmm. like you said, they're, they're there to see me, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and at first it's, they'll let you coast for like the first few minutes, but then it's like, wait a minute, this, 
we're, we're sitting in a theater. I'm supposed to see a killer Wanda Sykes show. Yeah. You know, so I, I learned that quickly. Um, <laughs> and so when I, when I hit the theater, I have a show, you know, it's, it's, it belongs in the theater, right? You know, and right. it, and they they walk out going, okay, we we got a show, but when I know I'm I need to, uh, you know, play around and mm-hmm. um, work some stuff out, then I'll book a club, you right. know, in between the theater dates where I walk up with some papers, you know, a notebook or whatever, because it's like, look, you, this is what you're getting tonight. I don't know, you know, I got to work <laughs> right, some shit right, out, right? Right? Yeah. So yeah. And do you when you're working something out? Are you thinking about like cultivating and curating it for the crowd or do you have in the back of your head, well, I'm going to tape this as a special so it also has to translate to TV as well? Or are you not even thinking about that yet? Yeah, I'm not thinking about that yet. It's it's more of um, what I want to talk about. You know, it's like, you know, like if, if now it's gun control, you know, mm. it's like I, I got to find what that is. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah. So it's like it's it's I, I like I said, it's like I know what I want to talk about, I know what the message I want to get out, but then it's just how to make it, you know, how to make it funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and not and not preachy. <laughs> right. Yeah. When you're working it out, is there like a moment where you know you're like, okay, it's ready now to be to go and tape it as a special, or how do you kind of decide when it's at the point of it being finished or or ready for a taping? When, when it feels like a journey, when it feels like, you know, it's, it's a story where from the start to the end, I was like, wow, okay, that's, uh, this is, this is solid. This is, I, I, I went on a little trip. I, I know what I wanted to, to do when I could walk away going, oh, this is what that special was about, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. You know, in, in this episode, 207, um, Deborah hires a director to, mm-hmm. to tape her special and, and that's, the director's Elaine, played by Susie Essman, the, the great Very Susie funny. Essman. The great Susie Essman. I'm working on a new hour. Oh. Totally different from the last one. I need a partner who's not going to try to change it into something it isn't. You're the only one I trust. So, would you consider directing it? Consider? Jesus, consider it considered. I'm in. Big fucking time. Great, great. Yes. <laughs> You know, it's it's important to Deborah because she trusts her because they worked on a special together in the past to have her direct a show, which you know, of course, doesn't is met with some resistance by the networks. But you know, you you have you know a Paige Hurwitz is your producing partner, and you have in the last I think three specials were all directed by women, right? Right. Um, is that something that is like you're like, oh, I, I just prefer working with women, or is it something that you consciously are like, no, I. I it just happens to be women, or you're like, no, this is a choice. Well, first, it's they're all really good directors mm-hmm. who happen to be women, right? And which for me is a plus. But yeah, I I do enjoy working with um, talented women. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <I've> done- <laughs> yeah. I don't. It's. I just feel like I'm. I'm being taken care of. You know. Mm-hmm. So here's a question I have for you. You watch Deborah Vance has been, you know, in the comedy game for a while. You've been in the comedy game for a while. When you watch her, are, do you see similarities between you and her or you and other women you know from, you know, the circuit? Or like, do you, like, what does that character feel like to you? Does it feel like somebody you've, yeah, met at Catch a Rising Star <laughs> or something? Um, I don't think, no, no, I don't, I don't see... The similarities, you know, be- between myself and Deborah. What about the like addiction to needing to wor- always be working, never to being able to turn it off? I mean, is that something that you you see in yourself? The the, the work ethic, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely the work ethic is there, and you know, it, it's like you're. Well, I guess in like in Deborah's, you know, you're you're not a, a, a star unless. The people are there, you know, to 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 see you, or the deals come, and it's like this business. You don't retire. They tell you when you're, you know, yeah. when you're retired. They they, right. they show you the door, you know, and mm-hmm. that could go on. That could go like for years, and then you then all of a sudden one day your phone rings again, and you're like, oh, I'm I'm back at work now, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, there is something about the 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 comics who are. You know, do those those residencies in Vegas or 
um, I guess Vegas, and <laughs> it, it, it does feel like they aren't in show business. Right. You know, it's like, no, they're yeah. just working in Vegas, you know? It's it's really weird. Yeah, but that was something we wanted to explore with the show. Like, it's kind of not, not looked down upon, but it is like New York and L.A. sees it right. as just a completely different thing, even though it's an incredible, you know, way to be doing shows constantly and have a fan base and honestly make a lot of money. You know, they never gave a shit about me in L.A. or New York. But at least they wanted me here. Um, it's interesting how you fall into your path. Did you always know you wanted to be a stand-up? Did you always know you wanted to do comedy? What's your, like, what was your origin story for getting into it? Wow. I was working at the National Security Agency uh, when I started doing stand-up. Wow. Yeah. And it was it was weird because I I mean it was a great job and I was, you know, pretty good at it. And um uh, but I but then I just got bored and I was like mm -hmm. I, I you know, just felt out of place. Like, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. You know? Mm -hmm. And I was like reading my, my high school yearbook one night and uh and so many people had written in there, you know, you should be on stage. You're so funny. Even my teachers were like, thanks for making class fun. Mm -hmm. um, and and I was watching Whoopi Goldberg's uh, HBO special. Um, and, and I said, I, sh I should try this. All this stuff happened like in a week. I was listening to, a to the radio and they announced that they were doing a, a talent show and um, stand up was was one of the categories. So I called and I went to this club and um, it was like a dance club. And I <laughs> went to the club and it was closed, but the guy, you know, he was doing auditions and I auditioned, told the little jokes that I wrote. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put you on the show. I did the show. Um, didn't win. Tony Woods mm. was on the show. Oh, wow. He won. Wow. Uh, no, yeah, but I had a great set and... And the, the MC, Andy Evans, he he was the local DC comic. Mm -hmm. And he was like, who the hell are you? And where'd you where have you where have you been? Where you come from? That's um, so cool. I said, well, that was my first time on stage. Yeah. And he was like, mm. get the hell out of here. Wow. You know, I didn't even know where the comedy clubs were in DC or anything. And and it started from there. And I just fell in love with it. And, and it just felt right. Like, oh, this is when I'm this is it. This is the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. In our world, Deborah started as an actor, but then, you know, went to stand-up because she kind of needed something where she could only rely on herself. You started in stand-up. Were you like, I should start acting? Or were other people like, you're going to be in this, so just you're in, you're, you're in Pudi Tay now or, or whatever. Like, how was, were you like, I guess I'm an amazing actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, I, I wasn't planning on being an, an actor. My thing was, hey, I just want to be a really good stand-up comic and be able to make a living at it and maybe I'll, you know, be able to to, to tour and do eventually get into a theater, you know. Um so that that was pretty much my 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 focus. And then when I got a writing gig um on the on the Chris Rock show, and I was like, okay, I can do this. This is cool. Mm -hmm. See, I can write during the day and go hit the clubs at night. This is cool. And then it was that. It was like, oh, we got to shoot this bit. Uh, right. Wanda, here, you do it. And I was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> and yeah, and I just started getting in front of the camera, and it just, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of like took off from there. Yeah. My first movie, yeah, it was, uh, I got a call, hey, uh, they're, you know, they're doing Nutty Professor 2, and, and Eddie wants you to play this part. And I'm like, mm. wait a minute, what, what the hell is going on? <laughs> this is, I was like, this is crazy. I love that. I was like, this is, this is I crazy. love an offer's coming. That is so yeah. good. Oh, I, I can't audition for shit. I, I, I don't think I've ever, I've never booked anything that I've auditioned for. Mm. Just the worst. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird medium because it's like you're just there to, yeah, it's so nerve wracking. You're never yourself. It's never no. your funniest. No. You know what I mean? It's never, it's, it's. But do you yeah. have an interest in like really wild. playing things like, would you do you have an interest in doing stuff that's very outside of your nor normal comedy voice or performing or a version of yourself? Like if somebody was like, I want you to be in a like a, you know, really serious drama or really, uh -huh. you know, would would that be something that you'd be interested in in 
in doing? Or are you like, no, let's just stick with what works, what's fun? You know, I used to say no, but I got a really good script and I think I'm going to do it. Oh, yeah. cool. Someone cool. sent me something. Ooh. Exclusive. Yeah. Hacks yeah. Podcast exclusive. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. You heard it here first, folks. And are you like, okay, this is going to be my approach to this character? Are you going to do the whole, you're going to go full Meryl Streep? Like, how are you feeling about that? <laughs> you got to go method. You got to yeah, go, go method. I don't know yeah, what the role is, but go the method. Whole time. Yeah, yeah, I think that's good. <laughs> is, that, is that it? Okay. I think that, yeah. I don't know. I certainly don't know. <laughs> go, 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 Daniel Day Lewis on. Yeah, him. yeah. <laughs> Jean doesn't let us call her Jean on set. We have to call her Deborah. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding, <laughs> listeners. We do call her Jean. She, as soon as we call her, she's Jean. <laughs> um, something I would love to to talk a little bit about is, you know, in this mm-hmm. episode, Deborah goes around town, you know, and sell is trying to sell her special, and in that kind of falls upon lukewarm ears. Um, I think, you know, you've spoken about kind of the disparity in in compensation for stand-up specials for women and women, women of color. Like, is that something that you feel like has at all changed over the years? Are you still like, you know, looking at the offers and being like, this is, this is still just as fucked up? Um, Not necessarily I mean, just for yourself. I just mean in general. Because you're also right, you know, producing right. a lot um, of other people's specials. It, I mean, honestly, it, it's it's still it's still mm-hmm. it's still screwed up. Yeah. It really is. Um, and and I, and I don't. I still I'm still trying to figure out what the basis is. You know. Yeah. I mean, of course. I I mean, I, I see what the disparity, is, but right. it's um. You know, you'll say, well, these guys are selling out. You know huge, you know, arenas or mm-hmm. uh they have this many followers. And it's like, well, yeah, because if the headline is this person it's 50 million for a special or 40 million for a special, um as a ticket buyer, who, wh- are you going to go see the person who you know, oh man, their special is worth 50 million or are you going to go see someone who's getting, you know, a half a million. Right, yeah. right, right. You know, right. It, yeah. it's just like they don't understand that having that number up there, that's that's part of the marketing. Oh, yeah. Right? Because you're already saying that they're worth X, so you're, the audience is going to flock to that uh, because I want to see what this $50 million looks like. You <laughs> right, know? right, right, right. It is chicken or the egg. It is like, you know, people are told the worth. Right, yeah. absolutely. So, but luckily there are other platforms out here that, you know, like, Deborah was doing, you know, you shop around right. and and you just get the number that that you can, that you're happy with, you can live with. I mean, in the day, they're jokes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> jokes. Yeah. Right? I make more jokes, you know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I made a decision. I'm not going to take that shitty offer. I don't need a network to tell me what I'm worth. I can self-fund. I can do this myself. Are you surprised by sometimes people who who come up to you and who have seen your specials or are a fan of you, fan of yours? Like, is there has there ever been like an experience where you're like, I'm very surprised that this person is a fan of mine? Oh my! Actually, I I was re, I was on Twitter and I read um I for, man I forgot who who tweeted it. He was he said I, I I'll never forget this night. Uh, we were at dinner and having uh, after dinner drinks, and Toni Morrison was qu- quoting Wanda Sykes' uh, oh, detachable wow. pussy joke. I'm oh. like, wow, <laughs> wow, that's amazing. That's oh what my God. the fuck? What <laughs> that blew me away. Oh my god, blew me away. Okay, I'm yeah. finally gonna read Toni Morrison now. <laughs> <laughs> You can connect. <laughs> now you can connect. I've read. I've read Tony. That's amazing. Of course. Isn't that yeah, crazy? No. Yeah, that's amazing. amazing. But like, of course, because smart like people like smart people. You know what I mean? I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, that makes the most sense to me. Actually, <laughs> it is so nice. Like we've had so many lovely moments with this show. With you know, including yourself, people who we love and admire and and are such huge, massive fans of say they love the show and that's like the greatest gift. And like, it is cool moments like that when you can still be like, discover the joy in it again that you're Mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, there's still people out there that if I hear they're a fan, that's so special and cool to me. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. 
and especially stand-ups, because we do always want it to seem like it's a real, like like Jean is a real stand-up, you know? And this season, especially her workshopping her material, her trying to sell a special, all of that feels like what it actually is like. So when stand-ups respond to the show, we are particularly excited, I uh-huh. think. And you guys nailed those pitch meetings. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, Thank yeah. you. Those executives, Thank yeah. You. Polite laughter. Nailed it. Oh. They're all smiling and laughing just uh-huh. a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's, especially the, the 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 goodbye, that one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. Thank you. <laughs> I think we have a lot to, to discuss here. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, I don't have any more questions. Do you guys? No? Well, thank you, Deborah, for coming in. Thank you. We are such huge fans. Thanks. And I think we have a lot to discuss here. Right? Mm-hmm. Thank you, guys. Thanks Thank so much. you. Um, Jimmy, can you hang back so we can chat for a sec? Of course. Oh, man, it's so, it's so painful. <laughs> so painful. <laughs> yes, and that, that, that actor, I don't know if you know Caitlin Riley, but she's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And no matter what, because I've gone into rooms, you know, like, we pitched this show with, like, Mike Schur, and, like, I've gone into rooms and pitched things with, like, very famous people, but, like, somehow you still feel so powerless. At least mm-hmm. I do. I'm always just like, oh, I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> See, I feel really empowered. I mean, I think that I most... feel empowered and listened oh. to and appreciated. I, I, you know, I have a different, <laughs> I, but it feels nice. I, I like that. It's like a performance. It's oh. fun. I see people I know and I play golf with. and It's good, but I get where you girls are coming from. I mean, I, I mean, I, I get, I guess, I guess I can, yeah, well, ima- I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> There is nothing worse than than being stuck in traffic after a pitch. Oh, oh. God. Just, I hate the waiting. The waiting is the worst part to me, actually. You mean waiting to hear what they say or waiting to go into the room? No, the the waiting after. The like, oh, oh. when do we hear if it's a yes or a no? And yes. sometimes it can be weeks and... People are like, how did it go? Well, (laughs) (laughs) still waiting to hear. (laughs) Wasn't that like a year ago? Well, still waiting. Yeah, Yeah, they haven't said no. They haven't said no. I know, right, yeah, yeah, that one. Well, they haven't haven't said no. It's not a no yet. You're like. It's a no. Come on. Yeah. Stop what? it. If, if, no news is great news. Yeah. Mm. If they don't call bef- by the time I get home, you know mm-hmm. it's a it's they're not buying it. I know. know. Yeah. And sometimes you know the moment you sit down. You just look into someone's eyes and you're like, it's a no. It's a no. <laughs> get me out of here. Deborah has a sixth sense, even though she hasn't been in LA for so long, she can tell that. There isn't the enthusiasm for this pitch, and she just knows even before Ava, who's a lot more green, that things are a no. Yeah. And obviously the stakes are so high for her because, like, we're all talking about, you know, it can be awkward again. Well, not we're. Like Jen and Lucia talked about, it can feel, you know, destabilizing <laughs> the pitch, not for me. But for someone like Deborah, who's been outside of Los Angeles, who's never really had the approval of New York and L.A., like she says in the beginning of the season, to have this, you know, experience of being cast out in a way to Vegas and having this four wall career in Vegas alone, coming back to LA is so it's vulnerable for her. So she's opening herself up to, to rejection. And even if she gets the one, yes, it's still so painful. And she's reminded again, what it's like to be worthless. Yeah. And I, I, I love, I love when that in the, the pitch meeting, when, uh, when Deborah said she wanted, uh, the director, Susie, as yes. his character, I forgot her name. But, um, Elaine, she wanted Elaine to direct. And when she got some pushback on that, she was like, she she knew, yeah. you know? She yeah. knew that, that that moment there, like, oh, shit, okay. Mm-hmm. But she, you know, held her ground. Was like, nope, this is, this is who I want. Yeah. 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 Have you thought about how you want this to look? Actually, I do have a director in mind, Elaine Carter. She directed my Oxygen special. Oh, wow. Elaine Carter. Wow. I have not heard that name in a while. That would be a very cool idea to add to the mix. We have been working with this amazing young guy on our specials, Alec Divers. Mm -hmm. Do you know him? He did the BLM Super Bowl ad for Duracell. Oh, cool. I'm I'm sure he's wonderful, but there is nobody like Elaine. Mm. I mean, it was her idea for Mary Taylor Moore to throw the hat. (laughs) <laughs> and she was just an intern. <laughs> <laughs> A 
And now it's time for the part of the show where I, as the host, get my big chance to pitch the Hacks creators on what I'd like to see happen on a future season of the show. I would love to see Lunell <laughs> and, and Deborah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't care what they're doing. I just want to see them. <laughs> In a room, yeah. Yeah, or, or maybe Lunell is pitching her <laughs> Some jokes, you yeah. know. <laughs> that would make me laugh. Mm. Uh, yeah. You know who else wants that? Lunell. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Well, actually, similar thing, and I love Lunell the idea. Text me and told me to say no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just made like five hundred bucks, right? <laughs> I know we do have to get them in the same room together. Who knows? Yeah, I gotta so see Lunell and, and so Deborah funny. in the same room. She and Angela are so funny together. Mm-hmm. They have their own. Like we do love do, writing like duos. You know, like Deborah and Ava and um, Jimmy and Kayla. But I feel like they are also another duo that like I don't want to mm-hmm. see them apart. I just want to see them together, just right. drinking and playing board games or yeah, you know, whatever. So funny. They are. They are <laughs> very funny. I mean. I mean, it, I mean, come on! Every everyone on the show is funny. I mean, Jimmy and Kayla. I mean, I could watch that <laughs> all day. You know, uh, Jimmy yeah. and Kayla. I don't know how to spell hemorrhoid. Uh, I just put down butthole blister. I like drew a picture. Is that okay? You know what, Kayla? You can go. I'll just take the notes. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank all right. you. Thank you. See ya. Jimmy, I've tried. I've really tried. Oh, I love that Jerry Maguire moment. Yeah, let's talk about that. (laughs) You're wasting time on a lost cause, and it's bad business. Your dad would be ashamed of you. Fuck you, man. Excuse me? Actually, my dad believed in Deborah when nobody else did. And so do I. So if you're not going to get behind this special, fine. I'll do it on my own. I quit. And so do I! What? No, no, Wait. she doesn't. No, you don't. No, she doesn't. Yeah, I'm coming with you. No, you're not coming. If Jimmy quits, I quit too. Nope, she doesn't quit. She's staying here, but I am taking Silas. Buddy, oh, grab sorry. your bag. Let's get out of this place, okay? Oh, no, sorry, man. They just promoted me. Come on. Although, you're very deserving. Congrats. Oh, thank you so much. Well, you heard it. We're out of here. That was so funny. When she's like, yeah, I'm going. He's like, no, no. I don't want you to go. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I am going to miss uh, uh, the woman from HR. Barbara. I am going to miss Barbara. 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 Yeah, played by the wonderful Martha, Martha Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know, you never say never. Never say never. <laughs> oh, okay. We may be able to find a way. You know what? Maybe Jimmy poaches her. Yeah, I think you never know. You <laughs> never know. She's hilarious, the, the, um, right? Hacks universe. <laughs> Hacks Marvel universe. <laughs> uh-huh. All right, well. Unfortunately, that's it for now. In our next episode, Jen, Paul, and Lucia will discuss making the season two finale of Hacks with Deborah Vance herself, Jean Smart. Ooh, I'm going to listen to that one. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank Wanda, you. We love you, so love you, love you. Appreciate it. Love you too. Love you guys. This is the Hacks official podcast with Lucia and Yellow, Paul W. Downs, and Jen Statsky. This podcast is a production of HBO Max and Pineapple Street Studios. Our executive producers are Barry Finkel, Gabrielle Lewis, Jenna Weiss Berman, and Max Linsky. Our producers are Beandria July, Melissa Slaughter, and Ari Saperstein. Our managing producer is Aaron Kelly, and Maria Robin Somerville is our associate producer. Darby Maloney is our editor. The show is mixed by Twee McCallum with engineering from Davy Sumner. Production music is courtesy of HBO. You can watch episodes of Hacks on HBO Max. Until next time. <laughs>